Linnea Quigley and a goofy looking puppet? I smell a full moon feature. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling David Dakota's fantastically titled B-movie, Sorority Babes and the Slimeball Bolarama. Released in 1988, this one went on to become a staple of late night cable and a video store darling. Featuring performances from the veritable Mount Rushmore of 80 Scream Queens, one really goofy looking puppet, and plenty of nudity and violence, it's no surprise this one is still popular. It's so popular, in fact, that star Brink Stevens is actually working on a sequel here in 2022. But enough about that. Can Sorority Babes and the Slimeball Bolarama roll a perfect game and get the coveted 5 barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by patrons Brutus, Steve Daniel, and Lust for Heavyset Bearded Bears. That's a very specific username. If you'd like to sponsor some videos and help free me from the shackles of YouTube's tyranny, you'll find a link in the pinned comment and description below. Seriously, things have gotten tough for horror movie channels on the platform this year. There's been a rise in copyright claim nonsense, and YouTube's ever-increasing prudishness have made it harder than ever to make these videos. Your support really helps me keep the show going. And now, let's get bloody. Full Moon Features, eh? I bet we're gonna see some full moons in this. I mean, it's got a Linnea Quigley in it. Urban Classics Presents. This sounds more like a production company for New Jack City than Sorority Babes and the Slimeball Bolarama. Oh hey, starring Linnea Quigley. I bet she takes at least 10 showers in this movie. And Hal Havens. This is like a Night of the Demons reunion. Fun fact, Quigley got Havens the gig after they worked together on that movie. Here's Scream Queen Brink Stevens, who we last saw with Quigley in Jacko. Next up, we have Michelle McClellan, who's probably better known to you as Michelle Bauer. You probably remember her from Puppet Master 3 or Virgin High. I gotta say, I'm not entirely sold on the neon text on the black background credits, but at least the budget Depeche Mode on the soundtrack livens things up. And directed by David Dakota. Dakota was a movie making machine who got a start with Roger Corman, then directed adult films as David McCabe, and got a multi film deal with Full Moon. And with the credits over, we get a live look at me working on the script. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely how I spent many a Friday night in my teens. <laughs> All that's missing is a Nintendo. But at least Hal looks like he's having himself a good time. Sorority House establishing shot. You know what to do. Inside, the girls look like they're getting ready for a black mass. You make it sound like we're devil worshippers or something. Hey, I'm just calling them like I see them. But it's all good because even Tony the Tiger here thinks they look great. And back in our first movie, this really could have been me in high school. Hey Mike, wanna go peep on some naked girls? No thanks, I'm watching a movie. Oh yeah, this definitely sounds like my friends growing up. You're sitting there watching the zombies eating people. It's not a zombie, it's a succubus. With all that squared away, it's time for another sorority house establishing shot. Inside, these two are either our newest pledges or they're starring in the most evil looking Summer's Eve commercial ever. Do you ever get that not so fresh feeling? No, because I'm a bride of Satan. And while the ladies are inside assuming the position, the guys are doing the same at this window. Back inside, it's turned into a Simpson skit. Talking out of turn? That's a paddling. Looking out the window? That's a paddling. The fellas, meanwhile, head in for a closer view. Maybe Hal's just hungry. Looks like he could eat a whole bowl of fuck. Turns out, they're just in time to see the ladies get covered in white goo. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. I mean, this whipped cream. From there, we head over to the gratuitous shower scene. Hey, where's Linnea? This is her specialty. The boys are enjoying the show, but Babs is about to interrupt. Ogling naked pledge of showering? Oh, you better believe that's a paddling. Busted, Ilsa, she-wolf of Sorority Row, gets to work concocting their punishment. And she's got a plan. I'm gonna break into the bowling alley at the mall tonight. And you three will join them. Um, how is this punishment for them? They get to break into the bowling alley with the hot pledges? Ah, oh, hey, you know, let the punishment fit the crime. See? How gets it? With that settled, we hit the road. Hopefully we arrive at the main plot soon. Hey, buckle up for safety, kids. I'd hate for you to wreck this fake car into the stock footage background. Eventually we arrive at this Claudio Fragasso flick. <laughs> Needs more fog machine. The sorority sisters break into the mall, and why am I suddenly getting chopping mall flashbacks here? Man, you know this is the 80s because there's a fucking Woolworths in this mall. Do you kids even remember Woolworths or malls? Christ, I'm old. Oh shit, it's George Buck Flowers, the janitor. This is like spotting Dick Miller in a movie. And eventually, our lead cast finally decides to join the main plot line. I don't know, this bowling alley looks pretty dead. Someone needs to get the ball rolling. I mean, it's so quiet in here, you could hear a pin drop. 
I have more bowling jokes here, but I decided to spare you. Jimmy tries to make his move on Brink Stevens, but all he gets is a taste of her pimp hand. We're in a bowling alley, but I don't think these are the kind of strikes I was expecting. I'm sure you guys are split over whether or not that was a good or bad joke. Oh, hey, remember how Linnea Quigley was in the credits? Well, now she's in the movie. I mean, you may not recognize her with her clothes on, but even fully dressed, she can still deliver a sick burn. Jump back. Prom coins on the loose, or is it high school hookers? Anyway, let's check in on Stooge and his pals. This guy is no Jill Valentine. A real master of unlocking would have already had them inside. That's a little Resident Evil humor for you non-gamers. Step aside and let Linnea show you how it's done. Man, that crowbar is clearly her prized possession. Now that they're in, they can steal the trophy they came for. The one the dude, Walter, and Donnie won in the league round robin. I don't alarm anyone, but I think Donnie's ashes might still be in there. Back in the control room, Babs and friends are watching like this is a live action version of Night Trap. <laughs> Not gonna lie, this feels like a movie Dana Plato should have been in. Speaking of video games, we then head over to the arcade where Linnea's breaking into a pinball machine. <laughs> I sure hope that's not the Lord of the Rings pinball, because there are no quarters in it since it just takes Tolkien's. After some more jibber-jabber, Stooge drops the trophy and it's smoking like it's in a Claudio Fragasso movie. Hmm, maybe Donnie's cremated remains really are in there. Or not. Look out, because we've got a jive-talking puppet. What are you staring at? This ain't no freak show! Ah, <laughs> the 80s, ladies and gentlemen. Look at our heroes. They look higher than interest rates. Oh, and the imp is like a genie because he's giving out wishes. And just when I was gonna grant a wish to each and every one of you boys and girls. Hey, can I get a wish, Uncle Impy? Because I wish this movie were over. Yes, I'm not getting my wish, but Stooge here is. I bet he wishes for a giant bowl of fuck. Well, he's doling out wishes, George Buck Flower is still stuck in the closet, which is unfortunate because it looks like his IBS is acting up. Back in movie A, the imp is still granting wishes. Why does he look like the booger from the Mucinex commercials? And apparently, Brink Stevens just wished to be Stevie Nicks. <laughs> not gonna lie, seems like a waste of a wish. Then, the imp turns the sorority sisters into monsters for reasons. I mean, look, I don't think narrative logic was a big concern when writing this script. Let's just roll with it. Good news is, Buck Flower is finally coming out of the closet. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. I mean, he's literally coming out of the closet he was just locked in earlier. Well, not so fast, I guess. Babs makes a break for it, and I hope a killbot explodes her head like in Chopping Mall. She tries to flee, but no dice. This is a genuinely shocking development. And if you guessed all these wishes were going to turn out to be crap, well, no screenwriter's credit for you. That shit was obvious. This isn't gold! It's painted wood! It's fake! <laughs> yeah, the imp is kind of a dick. Then we get a cat fight. By God, Wendy Richter just hit the fabulous moolah right in the ovaries. Yeah, my Jim Ross is not getting any better. Then this happens. Have a nice trip. See you next fall. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Settle down, Imp. I'm making the stupid jokes here. Looks like maybe Stooge's wish did come true because he's having a threesome. Hell yeah. No, not like that. He's getting murdered by these two ghouls. He's looking pretty red in the face. Then she tries to roll a strike with his head. This is pretty unforgettable. Back in the mall, Brink Stevens is beating on the Bride of Frankenstein like a rented mule. You could say she's in the pole position. <laughs> I bet you thought you were getting a hell yeah there, didn't ya? Hell yeah. Damn it. Well, that's going on. Linnea and the nerd are trapped in the closet, but they've got a broom. Linnea's a real sweeping beauty here. She's probably bristling with anger. Oh, <laughs> and a gun. Yeah, sure, why not? I wonder what they clean with this. You and me both, Linnea. Then she blasts the ghoul chick like she's a crip. As Pasta News once said, gun control means using both hands in my land. Hey, George Buck Flower is out of the closet again. Man, these YouTube makeup tutorial channels are getting weird. Downstairs, Peck Hard Rock here is in the kitchen and the ghoul lady is ready to fry some wings. And if you feel like this movie is basically in the crapper at this point, you're right, because now we're in this restroom. Poindexter is trying out his nerd stand-up routine. Hey, you hear what Spock found in the Enterprise toilet? The captain's log. Get it? I'd also like to point out that sitting on the floor near the urinal in the men's room is probably a really bad idea. After more romantic jibber-jabber, the ghouls grab Brink Stevens. They're about to split her like a wishbone. She's like, if it's okay with you guys, I think I'm gonna split. Then we check in with Babs. Looks like she might have wandered into gutter balls. Watch out for the bowling bag killer. Linnea finds Brink and Jesus, look at this shit. One set of legs, one torso, and a divider. My second grade play had more elaborate visual effects than this. Babs, meanwhile, didn't find BBK, but she did find the imp. 
<laughs> Look at this thing. It's got like two points of articulation. I do kind of hope he slaps someone, though. We'll be the first imp hand in show history. Babs, meanwhile, is feeling pretty fenced in by his advances. She makes a break for it, but Ghoul 1 is there, and she delivers a demonic pimp hand. While that's going on, Linnea and the nerd decide to get in a few frames of bowling. I don't think this is what they meant by hitting the head pin. Afterwards, it appears they've wandered into the backstage area at a Bob Marley show. Unfortunately, all they find is George Buck Flower. He is sleeping one off, apparently. They fill him in on what's happening, and he has the exact same response I'd have. I gotta tell you both, kids. Drugs are not the answer. Yeah, are you kids high? Because you sound high. But surprise, George actually knows what's going on. You done let the imp out. And it turns into an early episode of Dead Meat. Poindexter is counting up the kills. Two of the girls turned into demons and we had to kill one of them. And then there are two of our friends who are still missing. After that, Buck gives us the exposition. And that's when all the terrible things started to happen. But it doesn't stop there. Black magic to call up some sort of imp. You know, to help him out and be a better bowler and all. Sorry, but if you give me a wish, I'm wishing for something way better than winning a bowling tournament. Anyway, let's ask Lance Henriksen what he thinks of all of this. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> From there, it's a stealth escort mission as they creep around in the dark. Those are the worst. Too bad all they find is this jump scare. And now Babs is a demon. That or she's about to audition for a White Snake video. I don't want to alarm anyone, but there's like 12 minutes left in this movie, and unless this has a very gory last act, we might be in trouble. Linnea and her pal stop for more jibber jabber. Turns out she has gas. Literally. They're about to light some fires like they're in the doors, but not so fast. Babs has gone all Indiana Jones. By God, she's choking her with the bullwhip. But Linnea's a scrapper, and she dishes out a few pimp fists of her own. What a slobber knocker. Then Poindexter lights Babs on fire. I haven't seen hot stepping like this since Aini Kamozi. Aini Kamozi. God damn, that's a deep cut. Christ, was she made of gasoline or what? I've seen forest fires with less flames than this. Whenever they paid this stunt person, it wasn't enough. There's still one demon girl left. Any guess where she's headed? Go ahead, just take a stab at it. And since we're running out of movie and basically everyone's dead, I guess we might as well deal with the imp. But first, they stop by to see Buck Flower. Too bad he's dead. But the ghoul is like, wait, I just want to ask you something. They flee and clearly Claudio Fragasso has been in this stairwell. This chick is about to go Lizzie Borden on Linnea, but I can't get past this weird soundtrack choice. This is like bargain bin Herbie Hancock. There can be only one. Just insert your own brand antennal decapitation soundbite here. Killing Elsa Lanchester opens the door, so Poindexter runs to get the car. Stop, you're gonna flood it. But if you guessed he had an extra passenger, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. He's definitely doing some backseat driving. Meanwhile, Linnea's solid snaking her way to the imp. How wild is it that we're at the end of this movie and she's not showered once? She's probably very dirty. Then Poindexter wrecks the car. Guessing he's not passing his driver's exam after that. And he somehow gets to hook up with Linnea Quigley? Look, I'll suspend my disbelief for demonic imps and all that, but this dork hooking up with Linnea Quigley is a bridge too far. Oh, and we may not have Prince Albert in a can, but we've got the imp. I feel like he lost way too easy. And cue credits. I don't feel so much like this movie ended as much as I feel like it just got bored and gave up. So, what have we learned from Sorority Babes and the Slimeball Bolarama? Well, for starters, if Linnea Quigley keeps her clothes on for the duration of the movie, it's probably going to be disappointing. <laughs> One shower scene. I feel so ripped off. But enough about that. Can Sorority Babes and the Slimeball Bolarama roll its way to a five barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, this one is pretty light. We got Hal Havens losing his face, a bowling ball to the head, one person ripped in half, a stabbing, and a decapitation. Unfortunately, a lot of this gore is poorly executed or off screen. As such, Sorority Babes and the Slimeball Bolarama only gets a two barf bag rating. This is not a sick flick, but it is a minor cult classic. Looking for more Linnea Quigley? Then be sure to check out my review of Jacko. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.